everybody. Dr. Danny Purvis, pastor of Harmony Community Church, president of Growth Project Radio, and all-around nice guy. Welcome back to Growth Project Radio 2.0. It has been a long time coming. We've had a little bit of a, of a hiatus as we have uh, changed into a new studio, and, and we've, we've made some changes here to the, uh, to the program, and I hope you'll, uh, you'll appreciate those. Um, we have Savvy back with us, though. Savvy P., my uh, videographer. Um, uh, what else? What else do you do? You're an uh, engineer? Yes. Producer? Yeah, she says sure. Yeah, are you glad to be back doing Growth Project Radio? She says absolutely she is, even though she's shaking her head no. Uh, how, how was your weekend, Savvy? It was, good. it was good. It was a good weekend. Yeah, it was kind of exciting getting ready to come back here and get started here once again uh, at Growth Project Radio. And our goal here at Growth Project has always been the same, and that is uh, to uh, view the world through the prism of God's Word. And I, I don't know, I, I'm sure most people, obviously most people know what a prism is, but one of the things that I really like about it is that it, it takes, uh, you know, it takes light and then breaks it down into its basic elements. And that's a lot of the way that I see God's Word, is it'll take the stuff that we see out there in the world and, and sort of, you know, it, it goes through the prism and we're able to actually to see the details of it a lot more clearly than we would otherwise. One of my favorite um, uh, quotes by anybody ever in, in the world uh, was uh, one by C.S. Lewis, who says, I believe Christianity as I believe the sun when it rises, not only because I see it, but because by it I see everything else. And, and I have always been in awe of that statement, and that's exactly what Christianity does for me. Not only has it redeemed me and, and God has forgiven me, and he has justified me, and he has paid for my sin, all of that cool stuff. But he's also given me a way to be able to see the world in the way that he intended for us to see it. So we are going to tackle all kinds of subjects here on Growth Project Radio. This will not be a 2.0. We, um, we will not be locked into one specific thing. There will be times we will do kind of what we've done before in the past with... Um, Going through books of the Bible, that's always something that we're going to do, because we're obviously going to go back into God's Word. Everything that we're going to do here is... is as, as best as we possibly can, is going to be rooted in God's Word. So it, it, um, we, we are really, really looking forward to, uh, to getting that started again and getting back, um, getting back involved uh, with that kind of stuff. And, and uh, uh, like I said, we, we've had some, we have had some changes uh, since the last time you guys have joined us. And um, you know, probably one of the, one of the, the biggest changes is, is our change of location. So we're here before we were, I was living in, in Winter Haven, Florida, and we were traveling up here to St. Cloud to do the show. Now we actually live here in St. Cloud uh, to make it a little closer to the church where we're, where uh, I'm pastoring and where we're, uh, where we're going. Um, but um we're going to try to. I think last time we we, we kind of struggled to keep the keep the show to its sixty minutes, and our goal this year, or uh, as we start back, is actually going to be to keep it to thirty minutes. We like it to keep it shorter and keep it more focused. This is an introductory episode, obviously, so we're we're not going to uh, we're going to adhere to the thirty minutes, but we're not going to go into anything in any depth here. Uh, as I, I share with you a little bit about where we're going and and uh, and where we want to be. But as I've mentioned earlier, and, and I hope that's one of the things that has been clear in everything that we've done here at Growth Project is, is the driving desire to help believers see the world the way God intends us for us to see the world, to see Him the way He intends for us to, to see Him. Um, in 21st century America, in, in, especially among evangelical Christians or, or Christians, whatever terminology you want to use that you think applies to you, there, there is, has been this one thing that I have noticed over the past several decades, and that is that theologically we have, and you've heard me use this term before, and you will hear me continue to use it a lot, uh, we are theologically a mile wide and an inch deep. The vast majority, the vast majority of believers uh, in this country have no idea what they believe or why it's true. Uh, most of the times that is relegated to, you know, how do I know this aspect of God? How do I know this is how God is? Or this is how I know who he is? Well, I heard the pastor say something. Or I heard the guy on the radio say something or whatever the case may be, instead of actually exploring it ourselves. And that's not, there's nothing wrong with that. I, I am a pastor. People listen to me. And I try my best to be accurate and to be right. I'm never intentionally misleading, but but I can be wrong, uh, and have been wrong before. And so, um, one of the things that that Growth Project uh, is is stands on. One of the things that 
we have built uh, this entire apparatus around is how to be able to know him better. That, that is ultimately in and driving people back into the scripture so that even though when we do books of the Bible or when we do specific subjects like we're, we're going to talk about here in just a few minutes as we you know, point the way forward here for over the next few months, what we're going to be doing here at Growth Project Radio, um, one of the things that we want to make sure we understand is to push people back into the scripture, not to give all the answers. Um, because I don't think there's a human being on the planet, an organization or a group of people that can give you all of the answers all of the time. So our job is to kind of whet your appetite a little bit, maybe show you something in a way that you've never seen it before or, or haven't thought about it before. But ultimately, ultimately, when it's all said and done, done to drive you back in to the scriptures, that is ultimately what we want to do. Um, we had uh, not too long ago, I believe there was a... Um, uh, a survey that came out uh, among evangelical Christians uh, that had just basic doctrinal questions in there. And I think the percentage of believers who got all of those basic doc this is not way out there theology stuff, which you can get that way. These are basic doctrinal questions uh, related to God and who He is. Um, it, I think, if I'm remembering right, the response, the positive response rate, the correct response rate was somewhere around 30 or 40 percent, which means that six to seven out of 10 believers could not even answer basic doctrinal Christian questions, things that we should have known from the very beginning. For example, to give you a perfect example, one of the questions in there, and this was, by the way, this was not a study that was done among Everybody. That was not the um, that was not the survey samples. Uh, it was designed to be given and take. It was given to and taken by people who consider themselves evangelicals. Okay, so people who who should, by the name, would would know the scripture. Um, and one of the basic questions is. Uh, do you believe that people are basically good? And well over 50% of the respondents answered yes, that they thought people were basically good, which is really kind of weird when the Scripture points out m multiple times in multiple places that we are not good. In fact, why would Jesus have need to come and die for us if we were basically good? If we were basically good, wouldn't he just need to give us some maxims to go by, some, some things to do, a few things here, tweak your behavior here and there and all that other sort of stuff, and then we'll end up being fine. So we have a, a multiple now generations, I would say going back at least two or three generations now of people who do not know God's Word. They have no idea what doctrine is. They have no idea what theology is. And the problem is because those words, doctrine and theology, have actually sort of become, I, I don't know, bad words. They've become um, unpleasant words. Um it's, it's interesting. There was a contemporary Christian song out. Well, I say contemporary. It's not contemporary now, but it was contemporary when it came out. Uh, some years back in which the singer uh, sang a line that said, uh, put away the doctrine and love a little more. I, I think I know what the person meant when they, were, when they were singing that song, but the reality is doctrine is not bad. Bad doctrine is bad. <laughs> That's uh, Theology is not bad. Bad theology is bad. And I have, I have heard... People actually say, I've heard people say from the pulpits, I've heard pastors say this, and it, it, it just, it, it, it really irritates me when I hear this because it's, it's not accurate and it portrays something that almost seems to be out of our grasp. I've heard people say, I've heard believers say, and I've actually heard pastors from the pulpit say, well, I'm no theologian. The reality is, if you are a believer, you are a theologian. If someone asks you about God, if, if you're a believer and you're minding your business, sitting on the bus, sitting on the, the subway, sitting on a plane, wherever, and someone knows that you're a believer or you strike up a conversation with them and, you, and they ask you, hey, can you tell me anything about God? And you say, uh, God is love. Well, that's theology. <laughs> that's doctrine. Okay? So we are all theologians. The only question is, every believer is a theologian. The only question is whether we're an effective one or not, whether we're a good one or not. That's the big question. And so that is the essence for why we even exist here as an organization here at Growth Project. Our, we, we are a, dis, a, a virtual, trying to be a virtual discipleship platform for people to be able to, to uh, engage more, think better, and grow more, uh, and engage more with the Bible, engage more with God so that they're able to think better better and they're able to come up with a, a truer understanding of who God is. And because if we if we don't do that, if we don't allow God's word to tell us who God is and we come up with an idea on our own about who God is, that's us creating God in our image. That's a God that doesn't exist. 
And we have a lot of people out there, a lot of believers, who I'm going to be honest with you. I think a lot of their their um, engagement with 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 the world from from a Christian standpoint, engagement with their family, from a Christian standpoint, engagement with their work or anybody else with it, they they oftentimes will spout information about a God that doesn't exist. And so we are here not to obviously it's not cast aspersions. We we want to help. That's. I spent too many years of my life, I'm going to be honest with you, I spent too many years of my life uh, listening to other people to the point that I never went back, I rarely went back, and actually engaged God's Word to find out if the things that people were telling me about Him were actually true. That is, uh, that's on me, by the way. I can get frustrated all I want to if somebody gave me some bad teaching down the road years ago, which we've all sat under bad teaching at one point or another or heard it in some way, shape, or form, uh, maybe maybe believed it and maybe spouted it, maybe talked to other people about it only to find out that that wasn't exactly right. We can get frustrated at the person who told us that, and rightfully so, but ultimately I think we need to look in the mirror and we need to say, okay, I should have gone back into God's Word and validated what that person was saying. Even when I stand up at Harmony Community Church, when I stand up and preach uh, on Sunday morning, you will hear me say something on a regular basis, and that something is this. Uh, don't take my word for any of this. Don't take my word for it. Go back into the Scripture, and if you find some place where I am wrong, where I misspoke, where I said something that wasn't right in representing God, please tell me. You are doing me a favor if you tell me. And so one of the things that we're trying to do is clear that up, and that's why we had the, the, the name uh, Growth Project in the first place, and that is the idea, to develop multiple different platforms under this same umbrella for us to be able to grow as believers and to be able to be driven back into God's Word, develop our theology, be serious about our theology, and to go forward from there. So what are we going to do from this point forward? As I said, it will not be, we will, we will do series, like I said, some books of the Bible. We'll do current event stuff. I really like talking about, about that kind of stuff, how we should be able to look at it through a Christian lens, through the prism of God's Word, in order to be able to see it in the way that He wants us to. Um, so I, I, we're going to do a lot of that stuff, and they're not going to be any sacred cows here. So you know, folks are probably going to get a little ticked off from time to time, and that's okay. Uh, I, I know when I was when I was growing, and still am, continuing to grow in my faith. But when I was a young believer, and and I was being taught certain things, and and then I came to found out that maybe maybe they weren't exactly like they were being portrayed. I, my initial response was to withdraw from that. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to talk about that. That's a construct or an aspect of theology that I, I am not comfortable with. I will tell you, growth in anything is uncomfortable. <laughs> it is. It can sometimes be very painful because you're taking things that you've held as gospel with a small g in this sense, you've held this gospel for so many years of your life, and then someone's trying to show you that maybe that thing that you've held in that in that particular perspective is not exactly right. Uh, it's our initial knee jerk reaction is to uh, is to reject that and to be frustrated with it. Uh, so that, that'll probably be the case, but that's okay. I think any type of growth can can uh, can lead to some some painful events, and it's it's not our intention. To do that, by the way, I'm not going to be looking at you know something out there that I can do just to tweak people. That's not why I'm here. I don't really care about that kind of stuff. Uh, but sometimes there's inadvertent tweaking. Isn't that right, Savvy? Yes, she's inadvertently tweaked right now as I'm trying to ask her questions as she's trying to do her job. So if there's some inadvertent tweaking going on, then that's okay. There's nothing. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, it can, as I say, be sometimes a very, very, uh, a very painful process as we come to have those things that we've held so dearly uh, into what we believe, and then we find out that maybe they're not exactly as we thought they were. So. We'll be engaging in all kinds of things, uh, interviews. I'm going to find some folks that uh, that I think uh, I think have something to add to what we're talking about here. So I'd like to do some interviews. Um, we'll talk about all kinds. There's really it's going to be a potpourri. It, all of it's going to be focused on though. How are we supposed to view this thing, whatever the thing is we talk about? How are we supposed to view this? while viewing it through the lens of God's Word. That is the ultimate goal, is to be able to look at it through God's Word. Not to look at it through our secular minds, not to look at it through our hearts and try to reason and think with our hearts, which is we have way too much of that going on uh, today anyway. So we're not going to do that. Uh, but how is it that we are supposed to look at this thing, this event, this... this um, uh, uh, 
I don't know uh, whether it's a social justice thing or whether it is a, some sort of current of news event, some political event, some whatever the case, a popular culture thing. It doesn't matter. We're, we're going to tackle all of those things as it comes along. But here is actually what we're going to do first. And this is something I'm really, really excited about. Uh, under the old moniker, Growth Project Radio, when we were doing this some time back, one of the things we teased for a very long time was a um, series of classes that we were going to go in, in, and produce under the moniker of Growth Project University. Uh, and uh, one of the things we talked about on a regular basis was doing a class on biblical hermeneutics. And for those of you who don't know, uh, biblical hermeneutics is simply the art and science of biblical interpretation. That is, whenever we read God's Word, there is one overarching question that we have to be able to answer, and that is, am I taking from the passage what God intends for me to take? Am I really and truly understanding is, is it saying what it seems to be saying, or am I making it say something, or somebody else, if I've listened to them, and they're teaching about it, are they making me see something in the way that it's not supposed to be seen? So in other words, the, like I said, the overall question that we have to ask, every single believer has to ask is, am I taking away from the Scripture what God intends? And so hermeneutics is just a way of being, it's, it's a $25 theological term, doesn't matter, you know, whether you want to use it or not use it. The goal is, in hermeneutics, is to become a better biblical in, the Bible interpreter. That's, that's the ultimate goal. So that when I read these passages, I know when it's said and done, or I've got a reasonably good assurance that I actually have taken, the truth I have taken away from this is actually the truth, and not something I hope that's going to be the truth or want to be the truth. So... We have been talking about, we talked about, if you were around for, for Growth Project Radio, we mentioned this many times. It was always on the back burner. It was something that we really wanted to get started under, again, the moniker of Growth Project University, uh, and it just, it just kind of kept getting pushed back. There were a lot of other things that were going on. Well, I can tell you, we are one class away from finishing up that introduction to uh, biblical hermeneutics, and it is a basic introductory class to hermeneutics. It is the bare basics because the vast majority of us, we don't even know the bare basics about hermeneutics. And so what I've done is, is, uh, is develop this class around um, eight questions. I call them eight questions every believer should ask of the text. Um, and so the class will be, when it's all said and done, we've got one more session left. Here's the cool thing. We've been filming them, so they will actually be available as a video uh, a, vid uh, a video series, uh, probably in mid-January is our target date for releasing those. Filming is kind of the easy part. <laughs> it's, it's, it's editing and all the other stuff that goes along with it. We got some great folks who were, uh, who were doing that for us. And, um, so they're going. They're working on that now. We've got one more class, one more filming session that's actually coming up this Saturday. So be praying for us as we as we prepare for that final one. And the goal is to release it as a six week class. Um, could we go a lot deeper into hermeneutics than a six week class? Absolutely. Would the vast majority of people check out on it after about week two? Probably. So we are we're trying to the, the word that we the buzzword that we use here at Growth Project is accessibility. How do we take something like theology? which seems like it's almost a separate discipline that only certain believers do, as I said before, but we really are all engaged in theology. How do we take that which can be so intimidating to people, can almost be seen as a subset of believers, like you've got believers over here that do this, and some people over here are apologists, and some people over here are theologians. None of that's true. We're all apologists. We're all theologians. How do we make that accessible? That is the main goal for what we're doing. Obviously, the first thing is to be right, to be accurate, to be accurate and to be helpful. But how do we make this accessible? How do we take some constructs, subjects, ideas that are actually taught in seminaries at graduate level course in graduate level courses, and then get them to where the average person could just go on there and and look at it and understand it and follow along? I think we've actually strike. Uh, I, I think we've gotten a pretty good balance about this. I really do. Uh, I am excited about it. I can't wait for the series to come out. As I've said, we've got one one left. Um, but what I did want to do. And this will probably take us up to the point, um, if I'm counting my, if I'm counting my uh, weeks right, it'll take us up pretty close to the point where the class will be released. 
technically this first class is going to be released as a beta session. I, we're making it available to certain people and certain groups of people who will go through it as the six week class. So then we can get feedback from them about the delivery, how it works, um, what works, what doesn't work, what they liked, what they didn't like, uh, how things uh, uh, worked uh, um, and worked well, and and more importantly, from my standpoint, how they didn't work well. Um, so as we as we're doing this, the release of this class, this initial session is going to be like I said, sort of a beta test. If you're interested, by the way, in uh, in taking part in that, that's easy. You can just let us know, and and we'll be glad to uh, give you access and include you in that, and, and let you go through the class uh, class as well. But one of the things that has uh, I've been so excited about this is when you look at these eight questions that every believer that I believe every believer should ask of the text. When you look at these questions, they will actually generate other questions. And good, logical, straightforward questions that we should be asking the text every single time that we go through it. So in order to kind of whet your appetite a little bit, get you ready for this class that's coming up in January, I thought what we'd do is we would take a look at some passages. This will probably take us the next eight or nine weeks. So we're going like, to try to, we're gonna try to end this right about the time the class is being launched. We're going to take the next eight or nine weeks, and we're actually going to look at passages from a hermeneutical standpoint, utilizing some of those eight questions. Now, all of these eight questions, as you will see if you go through the class, if you get the material, should be asked of every passage, but sometimes some of them are obvious and you just move on quickly to, to another one. So we're going to look at passages. We're not just going to take any passages. We're going to take passages that are very familiar, that people quote and use all the time, but that also maybe are taken a little bit out of context and maybe don't exactly mean what people originally think they mean. Let me give you a little bit of a heads up for our next one, because this is the one where I think people will end up... Um, could they get tweaked by this? They could. That's not the reason I'm doing it. It's the it's just the nature of the beast, because we are actually going to talk about John 3.16, on our, our our next episode, a week from uh, a week, week from tonight, and we're going to talk about John three sixteen within the context of a question that is generated by believers when we read not only that passage but all the rest of the passage in the scripture as well. And that question is this: Does God love everybody? Does He love every single person in the world? Every single person that ever has lived, every single person that will live. Does God love? everyone. Of course, the knee-jerk reaction and, and response to that question is, yes, of course he loves everybody. And why do we come to that conclusion? We come to that conclusion mainly because of the single most well-known verse in the entire Bible, and that is John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So when you look at that passage and it says God so loved the world, it seems like the easy answer to that question of whether God loves everybody is found in that one verse. What if I told you it's not nearly as clear in that verse as we would like to think? That is one of the dangers in hermeneutics. That's what we've done. We've done that. Look, is John 3, 16 a very comprehensive verse? Yes, it is. Is that verse forever taken out of context? Yes, it is. And I don't mean the context of the rest of John chapter 3, but I'm talking about the context of the rest of Scripture. Any time we take God's, a, a single passage, especially a single passage, out of context, there is a really good chance, a better than 90% chance in my view, that we're going to end up at least misunderstanding part of that verse. There is something about that verse that we are going to miss if we take it out of context. And so next week, we are going to start this series off by tackling John 3.16, and we are going to answer the question, does God love everyone? which seems to be, as I said before, one of the simplest questions we could possibly ask in Christianity. But I think the answer is a little more complicated than that simple answer that we always give it. So we're going to look at context. We're going to look at context not only in John. We're going to look at it in context of the New Testament. We're going to look at it in context of the entire Bible. And we're, all, we're also going to do something that 
Uh, you, you'll wait and see. You'll see in the uh, in the in the class if you take the class. We also have to look at it from an original language standpoint, Koine Greek or Middle Greek, the language in which the New Testament was written. As most of us know, that that the New Testament was not written in English. Uh, it was written in uh, New Testament Greek or Koine Greek, uh, which is a dead language, by the way. It's not the same Greek that's spoken in, spoken in uh, in Greece today, even though a lot of the words are, are really really similar. Um, but one of the things that the that we have a tendency to um, ignore, and it's because most of us don't go to school and learn a dead language, so it therefore then becomes a little more difficult, or we think it becomes a little more difficult to include understanding the original language into our Bible study. I will tell you, I've got a primer inside of that uh, inside of that class. Uh, the uh, the hermeneutics class, which will show you how to make use of the original language, even if you don't know one, know one single word of Greek. And one of the things we have to do, not only looking at things in context, which we're going to with that passage next week, but we're also going to look at the original language and what information that could give us as well. Because I think it's important for us to actually look at the language and the words that were used when God inspired the original writers to sit down and write it in the first place. So the idea, again, drive you back into the Scripture, drive us all back into the Scripture so we can kind of see exactly what that is. I'm excited about this. I think it's going to be amazing, um, and I think that you're probably going to walk away with a little different understanding of that passage than maybe you have now. Um, and and but we'll have to we'll have to see about that uh, as the time goes on. All right, so we are just about finished here with our first session, our welcome back session here. That's it. Where this is where we will start as a relaunch of Growth Project Radio. I think you're going to find it a journey well worth taking. Uh, it is great to be back. I hope it blesses you. Um, leave comments uh, if, as you watch the video. If you if you think I'm hosed up on something, hey, you look, I was in the Navy for 20 years. 10 of those I spent with Marine Corps units. Um, I, you're not going to hurt my feelings. So, but if you if at least let it be constructive. If you think I'm hosed up, tell me why I'm hosed up. Show me in the scripture where I'm hosed up. I love that kind of good give and, give and take among uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, and and uh, so so comment uh, in the uh, in the comment section below. Um, reach out to me if you're interested in taking the class here as we begin to launch this thing in um, uh, in January. Uh, and if you're in the Central Florida area. And you do not have a church home, I heartily welcome you to join us at Harmony Community Church in beautiful St. Cloud, Florida. I love living here, love being a part of this community. Um, we meet every Sunday at 10 a.m. at Harmony High School, uh, in, again in St. Cloud. Uh, we uh, meet in the auditorium there, so please join us if you get a chance. If you can't make it there physically, we live stream the service on the Harmony Community Church Facebook page, so join us if you can. It's great to be back. I'm excited. I hope you are as well. And as always, remember, keep reading God's Word.